Hello and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Now I'm sure most of you remember this summer I teamed up with Lotus to bring you guys some cool content including a road trip in their Evora GT410 Sport. That experience kind of reawakened my love for the Lotus brand. I just really enjoyed the rawness, the pureness of that car. However, the Evora is actually the most sort of comfortable and usable car Lotus currently makes. So today, I'm gonna to be experiencing the other end of the Lotus spectrum, because right now, I'm on my way to find a Lotus 311, which I'm gonna be getting behind the wheel on. And, and if you notice a slight apprehension, a slight nervousness in my voice when I say Lotus 311, you'll find out why in a second. It has no windscreen and no roof. <laughs> I just had to get that out of the way because I feel like it's the elephant in the room. So yes, welcome to the insane 311. Now this car actually has the same engine and puts out the same power as the Evora GT410 Sport I spent so much time with over the summer. Uh, but it's actually based on an Exige. I think from the front, quite recognizable as an Exige, but as you make your way back, yes, it gets more and more ridiculous. Now, three versions of the 311 were made. It's a limited production car, no longer actually available, um, but when it came out, you could get a road going version, which is what this is, 410 horsepower from that 3.5 litre supercharged V6. Car weighs 925 kilos, has a manual gearbox, will do 0 to 60 in around 3.3 seconds. There was also a race version, which quite unbelievably put power up to 460 horsepower. Uh, it shaved off even further weight, bringing it down to 895 kilos, and 0 to 60 time was below three seconds. Around the Nürburgring, the race version of the 311 is only a few seconds off a Porsche 918 Spider. Now you might be getting the idea of how insane and track focused and track ready this car is. Finally, at the end of the limited run, Lotus also did a 430 version of the road variant. So essentially 20 more horsepower and a little bit less weight. I would suggest that's because they didn't sell all 311 of the 311s like they planned to do. But let's let's not get caught up on that because I think this thing is kind of amazing. And when you think that Ferrari have got the Monza, McLaren have got the Elva, Aston Martin have their Speedster and the old SLR Sterling Moss, this is like a sort of a, a bargain version of those insane hyper windscreenless, roofless, whatever you would call them. Uh, because when this car came out, it was sub 90k. And if it's sort of an enhancement on the insane Evora experience, which I loved and enjoyed, but for that fraction of the price of the insane Ferraris and McLarens and Astros, well, surely it's just gonna be brilliant. We're gonna find out because in a second, I'm gonna be jumping behind the wheel. And I literally mean jumping because this car also has no doors, no windscreen, no roof, no doors. Road car, I will repeat, road car. <laughs> This thing is insane! Okay, right. Right. Full disclosure, I have already been out in this car. But as you can imagine, it is so hard to film, given the fact that there is no windscreen or roof, I didn't really know how best to capture it apart from like this point of view. I really hope you're going to be able to hear me and I really hope the insanity of this car is going to come across on camera because it is just that. Insane. This thing is so frantic, it is so frenetic, it is so hardcore oh, that I do not understand how this is road legal. It's just, oh my god, it feels like a tin can with a rocket strapped to the back. <laughs> I cannot, I mean I cannot begin to explain how intense this is. I'm genuinely nervous experiencing this. Like, it's just so all-consuming. You really have to concentrate. If you take your mind off the game for two seconds, you're in that hedge. And, and then the feeling of being exposed like this to all the elements and the road in front of you is just, I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, and it is so quick. 
But you know what? It's not the speed that gets my heart racing. It's the feeling I'm getting through this steering wheel, the way it rides the road. It, it literally follows every bump and every camber. One thing I have to say about this particular 311 is whilst it is the road going version, it's been set up with the race car setup. So all the sort of toe and camber, the suspension, etc., has been really dialed in, making it a little bit more alert than maybe perhaps the ordinary car. But fundamentally, it's the lightness, 925 kilos. I mean, that's not a car, that's a piece of paper. And then it's got 410 horsepower. I mean, the whole thing is insane. But the crazy part is the steering, because I feel like I could send this around the hairpin of the Monaco Grand Prix circuit at 75 miles an hour and the car would laugh. It just, oh my God. This is a wholly different experience to the Evora. I mean, that Evora I thought was thrilling, was exhilarating, was kind of raw and very pure, but it makes, well, it seems like a Bentley Continental now in comparison to this. You have to be clinically insane to want to own this car and drive it on the road. Fine, if you're only ever gonna be on track, I get it because you would just demolish everything else on circuit that day. This thing would just eat up any corner you put in front of it. But out here on the road, it's exhausting, genuinely, because you're being battered by the wind and having to be so alert reading the road in front of you for the smallest imperfection, because it might send the car off veering to the right or to the left. And then you get stuck behind a van or a truck like this and you're suddenly like, well, what am I doing? What am I putting myself through this? But, but it's also brilliant. Like, don't, I don't want you to sit there and think that I'm slagging this thing off. I kind of adore it, adore it for its insanity. And the thing is, I know it would be a very different experience to the likes of a Monza on Elba, that a big, big horsepower, but also very refined. This doesn't feel refined. It feels, well, agricultural. It feels sort of basic. But because of that, just absolutely thrilling. It's a roller coaster ride that, I mean, I feel like I shouldn't be behind this wheel without some real expert training. Right, here we go again. Let's see if we can do some speed. Oh my God. Oh. I shifted early there because of the traction control, which has various settings, but oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are flying. Woo. I'm gonna slow it down. I'm not wearing a helmet and my face is getting so buffeted by the wind. <laughs> I can barely see, I mean, honestly. But yes, various traction control settings. I've actually got a little a knob, a nodule here behind the steering wheel. The minute I've got it on full traction because it's a cold day and you can imagine all that power going to the rear wheels and such lightness, this thing breaks traction like that. And I'm not confident enough to just jump into a car like this that isn't mine, that isn't a Lotus factory car, this is a privately owned car, the owner has very kindly let me have a go. I'm not gonna start trying to slip and slide it around. It's too, oh my God. Okay, right, here are some corners. I'm gonna be quiet. Let's see what happens if we uh, thread this around this uphill section. the back started to rotate slightly. I mean, I know this thing's got downforce, but it needs more. Oh, this is just so insane. genuinely exhausted. I mean, that was just the most full-on experience I think I've had in a very long time, but an amazing one. And I have to say a huge thanks to James, the owner of this car. Well, for, for owning it, because you've got 
to be, as I keep saying, clinically insane to do so. And he was brilliant enough to be clinically insane, but also let me have a go, which is, yeah, definitely one of those uh, pinch yourself moments and a, and a moment I won't forget because hardcore is an understatement, but special is also potentially an understatement because there's not much else like this car on the road. And I touched briefly on things like the Ferrari Monza and the McLaren Elva and those kind of cars, but as I kind of mentioned there, firstly, a lot more power, potentially a bit more refined and potentially at times subdued. I don't know because I haven't driven them. And I'm sure if I got in a Monza, I'd be going, this is the craziest thing in the world. But I don't think they'd be as dialed in, as pure as this thing is. And maybe as, I mean, it's a heart attack on the road, this thing. But amazing so yes i hope you guys enjoyed it. i hope you learned something because not a lot of people know about these things they are rare you don't see them very often and you definitely don't see them very often being driven on the road so yes if you have enjoyed it make sure to give this a thumbs up if you want to follow james and see more of his adventures with this insane thing i'll put a link to his instagram below and make sure to stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come mm -hmm.